This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 639, A Lifetime of Riches. Is it as simple as a few habits? Part one by Mr. Money Mustache of mrmoneymustache.com. And I am Dan. I am here each weekday reading to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet. And if you have any topic requests for us, please share those. Uh, Come visit oldpodcast.com and uh, give us some ideas about what topics you would like to hear us cover on the show. Now, I've got the start of a two-part post for you today, but before we get to that, I wanted to give you a podcast recommendation, Tech Meme. It's like NPR's Marketplace, but for tech news. Search your podcast app for Tech Meme Ride Home and subscribe for free. It's a great way to find out what you've missed in the world of tech. Again, that's Tech Meme Ride Home, and you can subscribe for free in your favorite podcast app. For now, let's get right to our post and start optimizing your life. A Lifetime of Riches. Is it as simple as a few habits? Part 1 by Mr. Money Mustache of MrMoneyMustache.com As a Mr. Money Mustache reader, you are on the straight and narrow path to considerable wealth. You're actively soaking up financial knowledge and putting it into play in your day-to-day life. Unless you are very new here, you probably don't need convincing of either the value of creating a golden financial situation or the methods by which we pursue it. Understand and optimize your spending with happiness as the prime directive while improving the rest of your life and increasing your ability to earn money as a side effect. Sounds easy when you put it that way, but to newcomers, there are many roadblocks. First is the issue of basic financial knowledge itself. Most of your neighbors believe that borrowing money for cars and kitchen renovations is a perfectly reasonable thing to do. A 5-10% to savings rate is admirable, And credit cards are a way to borrow money when life's little expenses temporarily outpace their salaries. With assumptions like these, wealth will always prove unattainable. But even with a solid understanding of financial concepts, you still have to get over an even bigger hill, changing your behavior in a way that sticks. After all, we already know that to get rich on an average income, you need to have lower than average spending. But a big part of average spending goes into car ownership. So that will be one of the first things you'd want to address by doing less pointless driving around in your car, right? But you've become very comfortable with habitual car trips. It will mean making fewer visits to restaurants, bars, and coffee shops, but that has become a pleasant and comfortable habit too. Booze, drugs, cigarettes, TV watching, video game playing, procrastination, unhealthy eating, sedentary living, convenience and comfort seeking, and unnecessary shopping are other habits that are widespread in U.S. society. And most of these stand between the average person and a truly wealthy life as well. Throughout this blog's lifetime, I've been trying to attack these habits from a variety of angles in order to create more happy, wealthy people. Beneath my usual drill sergeant routine and threats of face punching, I have laid out logical and numerical justifications for some of the changes and issued emotional calls to actions in other ones. Sometimes the articles work and sometimes they don't. So what is it that makes a good change-creating piece of advice? Recently, some important heavy iron plates of missing knowledge have been clunking into place in my mind due to a string of really interesting practical psychology books I have read in recent months. Blink, Nudge, The Tipping Point, 59 Seconds, Switch, and most recently, The Power of Habit, which is a great book. As simple as it sounds, the missing piece has been the concept of habits and how ridiculously important they are to the human life, every human life. If someone asked you to define habit, what would you say? Until recently, I probably would have said something like, a repeating pattern of behavior which is hard for some people to change and easier for others and the ability to change habits is sometimes called willpower. But I was surprised to learn habits are much more than that. As it turns out, habits are little chunks of autopilot behavior that get burned right into your neurology, permanently. Once you develop a habit, you can never truly erase the program, even if you manage to deactivate it. It gets even crazier than that. When your brain starts running one of its many habit scripts, a good part of your conscious judgment is shut off for the duration. The habit takes over, controls you until you get to the end of the script, and then dumps you out at the end. And this is not just a rare occurrence. Depending on who you ask, habits are at least partially in control for between 50 and 90% of our waking hours. 
This has been a popular field of scientific study for several decades, although recent breakthroughs in the area have brought it into the public eye, and the best-selling book list, as shown by the examples I just mentioned. Consumer marketers have been all over the concept of habit formation, as it is the basis for much of the sales and profits in the world's vast unnecessary products industry. But now the cat is out of the bag, and the fruits of this scientific study are available for you to use to your own advantage, instead of Procter & Gamble just using them on you. If we can gain a more accurate understanding of what habits are and how to change them, we can get much more control over our own lives. The studies that figured all this out have been fascinating. In one study, the brains of test rats were monitored, first as they learned their way through a maze to some cheese, then as they eventually repeated the maze run effortlessly every time they were released. Neurological activity was massive at first, but after the habit had been formed, they could race through with very quiet brains, making no decisions between the initial click sound that marked the opening gate until finishing the quest. Even if removed from the maze and trained for other things, the rats could reactivate the old maze program much later in their lives. And even if the maze was booby-trapped with sickness-inducing cheese or an electric floor, the rats still played out their habit scripts to their own detriment. So why is this relevant? Because as smart and fancy as we all are, our mind is subject to the same autopilot chunking of behavior. Starting the shower, arranging your towels and clothes, and going through the full routine of washing and drying yourself is probably one good example of something you do automatically. Reversing a car out of your driveway or driving or biking very familiar routes that you've done hundreds of times is another. Coffee drinkers, myself included, are certainly familiar with the process of habit formation, and smokers can be some of the modern world's most dedicated creatures of habit. And it goes beyond that. The way the average person responds to certain luxury products and makes purchases is highly habitual as well. Need to go somewhere more than a block away? Grab the car keys. Hungry at work? Head out to one of the usual restaurants. Have a problem with your house? Begin worrying immediately as you try to find a professional who can fix it for you. Uncomfortable or inconvenienced? Find a product to address it. Mr. Money Mustache telling you to start riding your bike around town for local errands? Immediately think of why you can't do it and start typing complaints to that effect. And here we get to the meat of the issue as it pertains to financial success. And you'll hear that in tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part one of the post titled A Lifetime of Riches. Is it as simple as a few habits? By Mr. Money Mustache of MrMoneyMustache.com. And one more time before I get out of here for today, I wanted to give you a quick reminder to check out the Tech Meme Ride Home podcast This is like NPR's Marketplace, but for tech news. Return back to it throughout the day to find out what you've missed in the world of tech. Tech Meme is known already for being great at this, but now it's in podcast form. Same headlines, context, and conversation around what happened today in the world of tech. So this is a daily podcast, Monday through Friday, which, as a loyal listener here, you're obviously used to hearing. And they post in the afternoon with the top stories and top posts about those stories, which also includes top tweets and conversations around them. It is perfect if you're interested in tech. It's hosted by Brian McCullough, who's from the Internet History Podcast, and that has been running for four years now. So again, definitely search for Tech Meme Ride Home in your favorite podcast app and be sure to subscribe. And that'll do it for today. Thank you so much for being here. Have a great rest of your Thursday. And I will see you tomorrow in the Friday show. That's where we will finish up this post and where your optimal life awaits.